we need to compare the results, the gas in place results from volumetric with the method which is known by material balance. If they go along together, then it, it means that our analysis is right, it's true, it's correct. But if they differ significantly, maybe we need to revise or maybe we need to revisit either the volumetric one or material balance one or both of them, okay? The gas material balance is quite simple. We do mole balance here. NP is mole of gas produce. NI is mole of gas initially. And NF, moles of gas remaining. Or you can also uh, call P for produce, I for initial, F for final. Okay, so NP is NI subtracted by NF. Okay, so this is the conceptual model. We start with tank here. So we imagine our reservoir as a, as a tank, okay? Initial mole, it's easy. We do this like PV divided by ZRT. It's taken from ideal gas law. Hopefully you can remember that, all right? So this is the initial moles of gas in the reservoir. We start with initial reservoir pressure and we assume isothermal operation so that the temperature is constant and the volume of the body of the reservoir also assumed constant. V and then temperature T. Let's say we have water influx, we have aquifer. So the, the net water influx will be WE minus uh, BW and WP. Uh, we produce uh, the gas up to GP and the water up to WP. And then the mole, the mole of gas produced should be calculated with this formula. Okay, again, it's PV and RT, but V here is GP. And then the other is in SC, which is standard condition. Okay, so after we uh, define this case like this, we can calculate the final or the remaining moles of gas in the reservoir, NF, which is calculated by this formula. And then we continue, we obtain this relationship. After obtaining this uh, equation, we do some assumption. Let's say, in general, dry gas reservoirs can be classified into two categories, volumetric reservoir and then water drive reservoir. In volumetric gas reservoir, we don't have aquifer. Okay, so the, the, the reservoir can actually uh, be considered as a closed tank without interference from external source like aquifer. It's only a tank containing gas. That's called volumetric gas reservoir. And for this type of reservoir, this relationship holds. The assumption volumetric reservoir and no water production, no aquifer, no water influx, only gas. By this assumption, we can derive this mathematically so that we can have these two formulas or these two correlations. P divided by Z equals to PI ZI minus M, which is M is a constant uh, times GP. Also, we can change it to this form. Okay, after obtaining this formula, we can construct the very important chart for reservoir engineers, which is P over Z analysis, okay? So if you plot the P over Z result, yeah, you, you can obtain the P data from static bottom hole pressure data. If you have that, right, you can collect it monthly or be monthly or yearly, you can obtain that and then you, cal you can calculate your Z factor and then you plot it like this one, Let's say we have uh, six data in the early time of our production. We achieve like this one, linear relationship, okay? This is true for volumetric reservoir. So after we obtain the uh, linear relationship, we can simply forecast it. We do linear extrapolation down to zero, all right? And by doing that, we have OGIP which is original gas in place. How to calculate our ultimate recovery? 
we can do that by just assuming our abandonment pressure. If you define already your, the, your abandonment pressure, you can just draw on your line here and then go down. You get GP in abandonment time. Okay, so it's actually very easy for us to do this analysis compared to oil reservoir. You just need to take your reservoir pressure data or static bottom hole pressure data uh, in timely manner, uh, monthly or yearly, and then you calculate your Z factor. Also, you have to plot P over Z against the produced volume of gas. Okay, so far so good. But if we have water drive reservoir, it will be more complicated, okay? So the, the line or the profile will be deviated. It will deviate to a higher GP. Strong water drive, we go with this profile. Moderate water drive, we go by this line. And weak water drive. Okay, so if you have aquifer influencing your gas reservoir, it will be uh, deceptive. It will deceive you. Uh, you. You think like this one, if I uh, do this uh, manually, you think if you see the line here, then maybe you can do forecast until this one, right? You can do uh, this forecast wrongly like this one because the data deceive you. If you have a strong water drive or maybe if you have moderate water drive, you can, you can forecast it to be like, like this one. It's wrong. That's why. We need to know about the aquifer. We need to know about the aquifer. We need to make sure whether or not there is aquifer, there is water influx, and we need to take a lot of data, especially pressure data. And then we do a simulation. Actually, I want to show you about the MBAL simulation, but maybe I can do that later on. I just uh, need to complete this presentation first. Okay, so this is, this is actually easy and interesting. You can construct P over Z analysis if you have sufficient data. So far, so good, okay? And then we continue with gas well deliverability. 